Hi, this is Mrs. Capizzi with a help video for 8-5, using benchmarks to compare fractions. So a benchmark is just a known fraction or a commonly used fraction that is used for estimating. So we can always use 0 and 1 as benchmarks as well. And then some common benchmark fractions are 1 fourth, 1 third, 1 half, two-thirds, and three-fourths. So when we're comparing fractions, we're deciding if one is greater than, less than, or equal to the other fraction. So here's a sample of some of the questions that we had in class today. So we needed to use the symbols greater than, less than, or equal to to compare the two fractions. So here we have five-fifths and four-sixths. So one way that we were comparing fractions was we were using our benchmark fraction sheet inside of our communicators. This side has the fraction bars and this side has the number lines and really it's whatever the student feels more comfortable with. Either one will work just fine. So if I'm comparing five-fifths and four-sixths. I'm going to circle both inside my communicator. So I know five-fifths is here because it's equivalent to one whole. And then four-sixths is here. So I can see that four-sixths would be less than five-fifths or I could also say that five-fifths is greater than four six. So the number on the right will always be larger than the number on the left. Let's look at example number two. I've got four eighths, which is down here, and one half. And I want you to notice, um, today we went through and we highlighted on the students' number lines, we made a highlighting mark all the way down, so any fraction that touches this line would also be equivalent to one half. So I can see here one half is on this line and four eighths is on this line. So I would say that four eighths is equal to one half. The next set of fractions I have to compare are four fifths and seven eighths. So four-fifths is here, and seven-eighths is here. Now you can see they're pretty close, but I know that um, seven-eighths is closer to one, so that's going to be my larger fraction. So that means that four-fifths is less than seven-eighths. Then the next one is two-thirds and four-sixths. So if I circle two-thirds and I circle four-sixths, I can actually see that they fall on the same spot in the number line. So they would actually be equal. And we also learned how to find equivalent fractions if you could multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number. So I know if I start with two-thirds, what could I multiply by to get four-sixths? And the fraction you multiply by has to have the same numerator and the same denominator. So I know that two times two gives me four, and if the numerator is two, then the denominator has to be two, and three times two gives me six. So I know that those are also equivalent two-thirds and four-sixths. Let's do a few more of these. I've got three-fourths and I've got five-eighths. And I can see here three-fourths is closer to one whole than five-eighths, so that is going to be greater than. And then here I've got one-fifth and two-tenths. So I'm going to take my number line, I'm going to circle one-fifth, and I'm going to circle two-tenths. 
And again here, if I took my ruler, I would see that they actually hit on the same spot. So I'm going to use what I know about finding equivalent fractions, and I'm going to see is there something that I can multiply the numerator and denominator by to get two tenths. And I know that one times two is two, and five times two is ten. So I can use two halves because the numerator and denominator match, so I know that these are equivalent. So I want you to go ahead and write down the next four. So I want you to try to compare two-fifths and one-fourth three-sixths and three-fourths, two-fourths and two-thirds, and eight-tenths and four-sixths. So you can use your number line to help you or your knowledge of the benchmark fractions. I hope that helped. Have a great afternoon.